Hello everyone, I'm Etienne Saint-Ange and I will present you this short introduction on structural connectivity. From the previous presentation from Gabriel Gérard, you should already know how to reconstruct a tractography streamline. However, in this presentation, we will really focus on streamline endpoints. So the two endpoints of those streamline, which will represent a connection. To compute the structural connectivity, we will also need an atlas or a cortical parcellation. And we will use this parcellation to segment the different region or different connection in the brain. Uh, we could use different type of map. So I'm presenting first the white matter part from FreeSurfer, but it could also use, for example, another representation of the atlas also given by FreeSurfer. Or we could use a cortical surface atlas, where, where instead of being in voxel, we are using vertices along a mesh. So this could also be used for structural connectivity reconstruction. Afterward, we will use this atlas with the streamlines endpoint to reconstruct a connection in those regions. I will show you a small example of how to reconstruct a connectivity matrix. On the right side, we can see that we have a brain with four different cortical regions, and we have also a few subcortical regions. Um, we will represent those as different labels in the matrix, so each will be used as a row and column. So we can see here we have the temporal lobes left, and the motor left, the motor right, temporal right, and then we have a thalamus, and we have other gray nuclei in the brainstem. And we will now use those tractography streamline to compute the structural connectivity. First, most of these red streamline can be represented as this connection from the motor left in orange to the motor right in brown. And we can use this, those streamline to compute the values in those two regions. So the motor left to the motor right. And since diffusion MRI is symmetric, this connection also is symmetric. So it also goes from motor right to motor left. So have both connection. In, in this point, you could give different values. It could be the number of streamline connecting those two regions, or it could be diffusion MRI measure along those streamlines. So you could average all streamline in red, compute the FA along the streamline, do the average, and use the average to, to put into that matrices. However, most often is we use a streamline count. We could also do the same for the other connection. So we could use this thalamic connection to the motor left and motor right and represent this in our matrix connection from those area to this region. And finally, we can do the exact same for the cortical spinal tract. So that goes from the brain stem to those motor regions. So this is a small example, but we can see that now we have a fully reconstructed matrices out of those streamlines and parcellation. The same approach can be done by using cortical surfaces, as we can see where we have those streamlines endpoint along the cortex and we could represent each connection in a matrix. From a full brain tractogram in an atlas, we can reconstruct this connectivity matrices using the, the number of streamline connecting to region. And this connectivity matrix can be represented as a graph where each connection is representing an edge in this graph. And we could add different values at each vertices of the graph, like cortical thickness or other measures. So now how can we implement this in Python? So there's a DiPy small example on how to reconstruct the connectivity matrix. And you will first need a, a list of streamlines, uh, which you should already be familiar with from Gabriel's presentation. We'll need the affine transform of those streamlines to be sure that those streamlines are well aligned with your atlas. You will need also an atlas image. So it could be a nifty image that you load yourself from, and as pre previously mentioned, the white matter park. Uh, in that case, I use the already included uh, Stanford labels. And from those streamlines, affine transform and label, you will simply 
give those into the connectivity matrix function and it will give you back the connectivity matrix. The resulting connectivity matrix can now be visualized uh, simply using those function already presented in the documentation to see the connecting region. Afterward, if you want to do further more analysis, you could use a set of connectivity matrix from different subject or same subject and compute the distance in between those, uh, those connectivity matrix and try to recognize each subject through a database. Thank you for your attention and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.